Hello and welcome to another SOC video for Domain 6. In the last video on SOC reports, we focused on the different types of SOC categories and SOC report types. In this video, we'll go over the planning and conducting of a SOC audit and the similarities between SSAE 16 and 18 reports with some mnemonics to help you all remember these things. So to get us through this material, I'd like you all to think about the following phrase. And to preface the phrase, let's pretend you were in charge of collecting evidence for a case that implied that the CTO had committed fraud. As you're talking to your CIO, you say the following. You say, sir, assuming that the CIO is a sir, the damn CTO is a liar. And you're gonna spell it like it's spelled here in the red font. So be sure to write this down on your memorization sheet. Now, if you're a CTO who's currently watching this video, I do apologize. The purpose here isn't to paint CTOs in a bad light. The purpose here is plain and simple, and that is to help CISSP candidates learn and memorize difficult concepts. With that said, let's jump into this. SOC audits typically have two phases. Phase one is the preparations phase. During the preparations phase, you would expect to see activities like preparing an audit schedule, creating a scope for the audit, which would include success criteria for the overall audit. And notice how our red letters are matching the phrase, creating an inventory of controls based on the scope, gap analysis, such as a readiness review, and resolve any discrepancies identified during the gap analysis. This is the quote unquote sir, part of our goofy mnemonic from the first slide, except that we spell sir with two S's and two R's. After the preparation phase comes the audit phase. If you've been through an audit of any kind, this is fairly standard. So this silly mnemonic is really for those of you who might struggle with this type of thing. The activities in the audit phase are as follows. Building a detailed project plan for the audit. This might seem like it should be part of planning in phase one, but actually this is referring to specific activities that will be done for the audit. Next would be to gather all the required data artifacts in advance. This might also seem like it should be part of the preparation phase, but this is typically done when the auditor requests the documents or provides a list of documents that could be looked at while on site. So technically it's part of the audit phase. Next we have providing facilities access, providing workspaces so the auditors can work, reserving meeting areas for on-site discussions with subject matter experts, conducting meetings with experts and auditors, conducting testing and providing uh, resulting artifacts and evidence to the auditors, allowing sufficient time for the auditors to complete offsite analysis of the artifacts collected or generated during the audit. Next, we have resolving any issues or impediments to audit completion in a timely manner or a collaborative manner, providing draft and final copies of the audit reports prepared by the auditors, and this contains their findings, etc. And then we have conducting the post-audit interview or lessons learned process. And then we have this part, which is basically advising management regarding any recommendations for the next audit cycle. And so then we have the other part of our phrase down there, the damn CTO is a liar. So SSAE stands for Statement on Standards for Attestation Engagements. And it talks about iterations 16 and 18 in the common body of knowledge. But the main thing you should probably be aware of is how the sections are organized in both standards. Section one has the service auditor's independent report. This is also known as the opinion. Section two has written attestation or assertion of the control by the service organization. Section three describes the internal controls and control objectives by the service organization. Section four has the service auditor's information that includes the test of operating effectiveness. Section five has additional information included that the service organization needs to supply. So any information that was missing during the audit. That wraps up our quick lesson on part two of the SOC reporting for the CISSP exam. That wraps up the whole SOC reports topic, so no more videos on that. Be sure to write down the silly acronyms and mnemonics for your memorization sheet because it really does help. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please head over to cissprep.net and check out our practice quiz to see if what we have to offer might help you in your journey towards certification. Thanks for watching and have a great day.